It's definitely a talk on carbon, but uh, diversity is a, another word that's uh, very topical for me. Uh, it's what it's, it's all about. Uh, I will, I'll read you a piece called Carbon out of this, this book. Um, it's got a nice photo with an accompanying element. Um, and burning carbon is what we're good at. It's not a, sometimes it's not a bad thing, but yeah. Anyway, um, kind of still relevant, this, this piece. Very short, so it won't take long. Uh, carbon. Everything living dirt to diamond. With increased compression, it becomes clearer. Pinnacle of usefulness, both raw form and condensed. El Dorado's secret. Bankable, dependable, depleted. Uh, so yeah, it's kind of wraps it up for me, just in short, short, sharp words. Um, so further to do, um, yeah. So Cape Rich Wells to 100 k's east, um, family farm. Um, I've been running since '99, just by myself. Um, Kerry's on board now, so. Um, the cows are back. So be careful what you read. I mean, right, because it, it turns out the cows disappeared and um, I was off on another tangent, but um, it's funny, every 10 years, you <coughs> something seems to come along and away you go again and your passion's ignited and for that was, for me, was doing a course with the mass humus um, in biofermentation and um, that was just must be my Gemini, Gemini side, it just uh, off I went again. It was just, and that followed into a cropping phase for me. So growing stuff, I'm getting a really good big kick out of that. So how do we do this one? Yeah. So um, putting this together, I just thought, um, and natural capital, I hate that term, but that's what, what we're using at the moment. So just a bit of a stock take uh, on farm. And they say they don't make any more farming lands, but this stuff they definitely don't make any, any more of. Um, so, yeah, um, that's the pinnacle. That's what we've got to look, look after and, and protect first. So then it's then protect and enhance what you've got. So, um, and if you've got a problem, for the last decade or more, I've just Sydney Waddle has been my number one enemy, and it's actually it's a funny plants. They're very intelligent, but it brought me back and introduced me to this. And we've got so much of it at home. I'm, I'm, I'm blessed. We're blessed with um, our natural resource all the way down to the coast. But this this guy, boom, he was he was taking over, and we in the southwest we've got no one idea of how it's just yellow fire and it's taking over um, and I see it everywhere now I've got an eye for it it's just like bang 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 so not when it's seeding but bang turn it into a into an asset and it goes straight into compost um, and we've just started a uh, carbon project um, uh, with Justin Johnson so uh, in the background there's a blue gum plantation so yeah just Link it up um, and get that microclimate going. That's what it's all about. Um, and diversity, diversity, diversity. Uh, I'll just go sideways quickly into that blue gum side of things. I've just, uh, last year and a half, that's where I've been, just totally focused. Kerry and I have just been um, smashing blue gum plantation back in. So it's like back into the old 80s and clearing days. It was just phenomenal, but doing it differently this time. This is a so we're, we're linking existing um, plots within that and then outside the, um, the plantation as well, just across the whole. We're going back to the 80s or 90s when uh, there was all this restoration and, and um, good stuff going on, land care, but you drive through the country now, all those fences are down, stock are back in there. It's just gone to the grief again. Um, so yeah, it's just it's just a science. Um, 
chemistry lab uh, just introduction is just incredible. So nowhere, it's just that fun fungi dominant. Just you just see it. Fungi is so important. The biology and the bacteria. bacteria this is that's the coal face that we've got to understand more about, and um, it's the missing piece in the jigsaw. Uh, so yeah, we're learning a lot. And once again, we're recycling the, the blue gum chips, keeping them fire down to a minimum. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure if you're reading this at the same time, but um, yeah, it's just be careful of fire, especially when they, <laughs> you think, oh, one day you do a, a windy day, and you say, oh, I won't do that again. Go for a calm day, but and thermals come into it, and before you've got it, you're a raging bloody hurricane going. So it's pretty exciting stuff. Especially when there's a road reserve just 100 metres away. So, my passion um, obviously is uh, organics and um, and uh, you know treating the land with respect. Uh, I just feel like our ego gets in the way a little bit sometimes, um, and just yeah, we need to be you know nuking it less. Um, and trying to help it just get out of the way of the nature a bit. Um, if anyone's heard of this book, I, I recommend it. It's phenomenal. It's a bit scary when you... Uh, it was written back in the 70s and we've just continued on down the path um, quite blindly. Uh, this is a 2000... Uh, not last year, the last dry. And basically, I had this fishing net out, out, just cleaning it up. And this was, this ended up in my shed. This is 20, 30 k's away. Um, yeah, starting point when it comes to the soil side of things. Um, obviously, you want to know where you are, um, testing. Uh, but just look more at the, the mineral, um, the biologically available, and, and total testing. Just know what's available and, and just get that releasing. Um, obviously, a little human creativity comes into it as well. Um, for the, I actually studied holistic management and that's um, just, that's where it took off again for me as well. And it's, uh, if you've not, well, when they talk about regen ag these days, it's, um, Holistic management is pretty much the, the apex of where they are in that, that discussion. Um, but this is more the, the biofermentation, it's like brewing beer, using, but using um, milk, molasses and yeast and, and cow manure as so basically trying to re, uh, a rumen. It's basically a rumen in the can. Or, um, not too much, well, you, there's a bit of methane coming out of there, it's quite strong. But uh, also using uh, solids, applications, um, basalt's a big one. Uh, and this is also mass humor. So we're using burning bones to release uh, phosphorus and, and calcium. And then kill, uh, so burning and then grinding them up into finer and finer particles, and then putting them into the biomix. It's just basically unsoluble, indissoluble plant available nutrients. And these guys are running around the world, South American um, organization, just handing this stuff, stuff out for free. That's, I, I really tip my hat. Recycling, compost, back in. Um, yeah, and import as locally as possible. What was in the can again? Sorry, in here? Yeah. Uh, so, as a catalyst is uh, manure. Milk, molasses, yeast is your catalyst, and then you chuck in your elements. And so off your soil tests, weak points, hit it, whether it's copper, cobalt, and yeah, all those things are pretty standard um, lack of, so whack them out. I put them as a, uh, down as a liquid for inject into the cropping, um, I do a broad acre as well. This is a, um, it's more of a stimulant as well on that broad acre side. And I overlay it or underlay it with a, a, a solid application as well. 
Um, so, jeez, uh, there's our first mistake, Kez. How did that happen? Oh, this is the resizing. It's mixed uh, up. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, I, with all my photos, it um, <laughs> was quite large, and Andrew shrunk it, and there's been a cross contamination. There was supposed to be all the crappy photos. So, this is our local, you know, Wellstead shop um, selling chemicals, the agent. And this is out the back, and that's just, for me, that's pretty damn scary. That's just one small community. Um, so, we were taught this stuff back in school, um, and we've just forgotten it. And the system, I think we're all honest with ourselves, it's pretty broken. Um, so, we basically, get out of the way. Carbon's, carbon is so important, it is a sponge. Um, this, I got really clever, it's my only part of the whole pro power presentation. <laughs> <laughs> I got to the graphs, and I was so happy with my arrows. But, <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's just so... I blame Steve Jobs. Yeah, yeah. She did it on an apple. Yes, that's fair enough. <laughs> but, yeah, it's just simple. It's... It's simple, so she's so complex, but um, you sit back and just see how it works. It's just, um, it's a beautiful thing. And we're just starting to see this sort of stuff. It's just incredible. This is last year, it's just dry as a bone, but just, it just got a sniff and up it came. It's just, look at the root depth and look what's hanging on. It's just so much happening. Um, so yeah, pretty basic stuff, old milk fats. But a thousand, uh, eight thousand liters. Pods, great invention. Um, it's nothing wrong. I always say with like, the, the huge machinery, boom sprays and things. That, um, it's nothing wrong with the hardware. It's just the software we're putting through it. It's just what we're putting through it. This stuff will go straight through that as well. That's that's from the the, the um, concentrate. Um, so we put put it in, diluted, obviously. That's a broad acre application. It would be much better with lovely one of those big broom, uh, boom sprays, just straight to the ground. But um, this is starting to get results. Um, and this is exciting. This is another part of my life at the moment is uh, hemp. I'm on the Western Australian um, Hemp Growers Board. Um, and we just, <laughs> this is this year's crop. Um, this year, the big problem for us was water. So the biology has been knocked around from that. Um, at last we've got moisture in the ground from, from the hemp point of view and I'm determined to show it can happen on a broad acre scale. But yeah, we're starting to see results. Um, this is, this is a, um, a fibre variety, Santifa. That's pretty exciting. But yeah, to see that come up, that was, a, that was bone dry. We got this magic 40 mils of rain and it was just so exciting. But that was the last rain we had until about May, so that didn't quite pan out. Um, so this is where I was getting a bit nervous with uh, until the last graph came up. Um, so, so animals seem to be, you know, this is my holistic management training. Uh, you know, they're not the criminals in the, the equation. Um, the earth got to this stage through animal impact and, you know, wandering wildebeests thousands and thousands, hundreds of thousands running through, you know, open savannah lands, getting chased by lions and herding and, and impacting but, and moving on. So it's, it's the management. It's, it's not the animal that's the problem. So they can be carbon sinks. Um, you just got to, you know, uh, just get the management right and um, they'll, they'll promote humus building and um, get soils healthy. And that's where the biology and stuff comes in. Um, I'm not sure if we've seen. And from a cropping point of view, uh, I've got a lot of perennial and uh, heavy kite country that hasn't been opened up for 30, 40 years. So I'm taking that opportunity to get into a, a cropping regime and the results are phenomenal. The, the years after, it was just um, pastures just taking off again chucking in a lot of species as well. So, but ideally, um, pasture cropping, 
it was just a, that's a no-brainer. Um, having perennials in there and just manipulating with livestock and just direct drilling is just it's simple. Does everybody know pasture cropping? Did, did you want to give a little bit more detail on that? Uh, I've got time, but um, do I have time? Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so basically, it's and this is where the, probably more the re regen egg coming into it now. Uh, um, so basically, there's uh, this is the problem, problem I've got with regen egg. Not that I have a problem with it. I just um, it's like any word. It's become a, a buzz, and everyone's jumping on board and. Uh, it's just, it's, it's like a gold standard, you, you need to, I'm kind of, it's pain having that organic status at times, but it keeps me honest and keeps me on track and focused and, um, yeah, I just, I, the regen, the movement's fantastic and it's just, we've just got to be careful to protect it, like a, a lot of these, these, um, these areas and, and, and words, it's, as long as we stay true to it, it's, it's great because it's, it's better than the alternative. But pasture cropping, uh, basically you're not spraying out and, and monoculturing the country just with one, one variety. Everything else is the enemy. It's, it's about uh, perennial based pastures are, are good as um, just using that winter dormancy period to manipulate it with livestock. Fertile, and that's what I'm saying with the, the hoof in the mouth, it's, it's, it's grazing, it's cultivation and, and um, fertilising all in one. So manage that and then in the winter, direct drill whatever species you want. So the, the perennials is there, um, but it's dormant, so you've got your, your uh, winter crop, whatever your, that is, coming straight up out of it. Very low cost, very little risk, and if you put in multi-species as well, they're obviously supporting each other underneath through um, co um, co-activity. Um, just basically, and you've just got to be careful what you're actually um, planting together, obviously, to, at a, at a um, harvest point of view and separation at the other end. But yeah, that's that just seems low risk and very, very um, beneficial, especially for the soil as well. Um, and coming to pastures as well, obviously the, the, more, the more species in the pasture, um, the better as well, especially for the, the rumen and gut health and I guess in the long run methane, methane uh, emissions. Um, so this is my little plug for biodynamics and but, but this is what's happening. Um, <coughs> just fungi's just not even spoken about in modern agriculture. Um, and it's just, it is, we've all, all realised that mycelium's the unseen hero. So um, you hear so many people running around, you know, oh, we used to pick field mushrooms and back in the 70s and whatever, and we don't seem to do that anymore. Well, apart from that paddock way out the back where we don't actually get to very often with a super spreader. Um, so, yeah, uh, this is, well, Regen Ag, um, Kim Cruz, a Kiwi guy, was the one that organised the um, Mass Humus guys to come over. And that was some little plug for him. I'm not sure how he's going, but they just were giving out so many recipes. And this is a classic one. It's a, a mineral block. Um, summer, well, just summer block, but you'll all, you'll all cringe. One of the main contents is cement. <laughs> it's like, whoa, we're like, whoa, what's going on there? It's like, uh, it's, it's part of it. So, it's obviously the, yeah, just bulks them up. <laughs> Plugs their butt, <laughs> no methane. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is on top of the, on top of those biofermen. So there's a lot of calcium um, from the milk and um, reacting with fungi or whatever, so it's a, it's a hell of a science lab. And yeah, I just, 
we all remember the the biodynamics um, uh, CSBP or whoever it was the the hatchet job they did on it with the the next door neighbour it was quite entertaining but um, yeah a little when you come to think it was a, a little harsh uh, because yeah then you start realising that Cullens and and we even have a local winery and, and worldwide it, biodynamics is just a phenomenal uh, incredible uh, way of farming. Well, in a way of looking at the world, um, when you get your, your head around it, it's, uh, I, I know a little and I just, I want to know more, so, it's, um, yeah, it's just, obviously, I want to get, get bigger and actually use a proper flow form built into the actual grounds, but just using plastic at the moment, <laughs> just left over from next door neighbours, uh, Grain bags, which is another another little point of the agriculture is probably the use of plastics. Probably is one thing that we've really got to look at, and that's where the hemp comes into it. So hopefully we we um, get this hemp thing up and running, and the bioplastics it's it's there. We've just got to get industry up and running in, in WA. Um, we seem to be you know isolated in the world in Australia uh, at the moment. That's probably a good thing, but um, WA is on the end of that as well. We, uh, we're slow to take up the, the um, uh, manufacturing side of things, but if anything, in the last couple of years, hopefully that's, we've learned from that and we'll uh, get that going. But yeah, the hemp, hemp, thing, hemp world's pretty exciting. So um, that's, that's me. Uh, could ramble on for another couple of hours and show you lots of photos, but that's, <laughs> that's it. Thanks, Richard. Thanks. Thank you.